Good morning. Uh, <laughs> um, my name is Nicola Ackerman. I know that most of you had me last year, so you hopefully uh, remember me. I'm not sure if there are some new people. So briefly, I'm a professor of physics uh, near the city of Atlanta, so near Emory University. And then I'm also learning in the needs in the Manchua language and Washington address. And then I'm going to log you to Dorduch here by Agnes Scott College La and Bumrumbagi in a Bumrumbagi Inns. Hi. My name is Michelle Kuchera, and I will be co-teaching with Nicole this year, and I am an assistant professor at Davidson College in North Carolina. I am Michelle Kuchera, and I am a Davidson College professor in the Lerowe Legate. In the year two curriculum, we studied mechanics. We studied the way things move, the way that things are uh, have forces act on them and what is energy. And then Lorim Nibakala and Zukar Jairsna in a Gujuribat Jairis and then Mubu Chichi Pension Line in a Shuk and Kandagan Tewudu and then also energies in a Nibakaragar Tewudu, Dikola Jangbaris. So in this year's class, we're going to be talking about a variety of topics, but what we're going to start with is the very, very small. Talo and Zu Joshi Kamundo Kashichi Kola Jairis. So you can imagine having a tree, and if you take part of the tree, you're left with, say, a branch, and you could break the branch into, for instance, twigs or wood chips. So we can then grind the twigs or the wood chips into sawdust and have tiny little pieces of wood. So can we take this smaller if we have this wood powder can we break it into even smaller pieces? How do you know that? Through microscope. Ah, perfect. Uh, so we know that we can use tools <laughs> to look even beyond what our eyes can see. So in the case of a magnifying glass, I can see more detail than my eye alone would let me see, or I can use a microscope to see much, much smaller. So sawdust to our eyes is very small, like dust or powder, but under a microscope, we can see all of this structure that we couldn't see with our bare eyes. What we're going to be talking about now, though, is even much smaller than this. On the front page of your packet, you have a response card. If you haven't done so already, please pull that off so you have it separate. So I know that you've studied different things in your biology, neuroscience, and physics classes in the past, so we're going to start with some simple questions just to understand what you've already learned. So you don't have to initially use your, your response card, but just raise your hand if you know the first word, if you know what it means. 
Tanda tanda di show itu kita pergi mata na yang degres, lakwa je kian roce, sekitar min tangguh juga, sih tangguh juga. Oh, di kita tanda aku gigi yoba ina lakwa kian kian roce, tapung saya dia perlu. Okay, okay. So raise your hand if you know the second word. Tak sih ni bade kari kari yang bah singgi ina lakwa kian roce, sih ni bade. Okay. Raise your hand if you know the third word. Sumbade. Okay, and raise your hand if you are familiar with or you've heard of the last word. Okay. So now I'd like to pose a question to you that you will use with your response sheet. Okay. Discuss with each other and then pick a color for which is the smallest thing we can see with a microscope. Among these. Yeah, of these four things, which is the smallest thing we can see with a microscope? Okay. So they should discuss first. Okay. If you can wrap up your conversations and hold up the color that corresponds to your choice. Uh, Okay, I see a lot of blue answers. Can someone explain why they think they can see this with a microscope? <laughs> He actually chose uh, cells. Okay. So he, the reason why he chose cells is that uh, cells can be s directly seen under a microscope, but uh, atoms, uh, electrons, and molecules uh, cannot be seen under a microscope. It's too small. Yep, that is exactly right. So cells are made out of molecules, and as we'll discuss, molecules are made out of atoms, but these are too small to actually see with a microscope. So what we're going to be focused on today are things smaller than you can even see with a microscope. So we talked about what happens when you have a tree that you break into smaller pieces. What if instead we have water and we try to zoom in closer and closer to water? In closer and closer. Yeah, and keep getting smaller and smaller. That and then so, when do you do the thing? Just hold the thing by him. Ba, did you some when so when do you tell the rabbit? Ba, that did you tell when so two day and that when hold the hold the thing and do the thing by him? And then cells. Cells. Tap on the tongue to grab it. No. Okay. Right. So if we have pure water. We won't see cells, so we just zoom in, and there's nothing you can actually see under a microscope. So we're going to talk about now what you might see if you were to watch a few particles in the water. And just so you have it, this is the source of the video that we're going to watch if you want to go and watch it later. And then there's a simulation here that's really interesting, but we're not going to do right now. Okay. 
Ne di ki zeki kiransı cuma ne çaya tolar tatuğu yapayına di çaya ki kajan di yus. Ne nibadı karısına tanda ki gücü di ki roa korin rojü yus. This is a phenomena called Brownian motion, and we'll spend a few minutes discussing what it is. A di ki milla karısı karısına kanda brown gücü sigres, brown gücü. So what do you see right now? Kiransı karı karı tongudu. Oh, some uh, like uh, movement. Yep, we see some movement, Jig right? Jig jiggling, jig jiggling movement. Mm -hmm. And what we're actually seeing are little bits of fat in milk. Uh, so every little dot is actually a little bit of fat or oil. So is, is fat or oil alive? No. So why is it moving? Ah, tenshu, tenshu, tenshu. So attraction force and repel, uh, repelling force. Okay, so so what I'm hearing is that you're thinking that there are forces involved. So what what forces? Um, so if we have one uh, little bit of fat here, what uh, if it has attraction and repulsion to what? Ah, uh, so uh, between each other, some say between uh, two, two oil particles, some say water. Ah, yes. So water is important here in that milk is mostly water. So each one of these little globs of fat is surrounded by water. So under a microscope, can we see water molecules? So we cannot see the water molecules here, but the, the forces that you're thinking about, this is as, as simple as a pushing force due to collisions. So these water molecules that we can't see are pushing against the fat globules that we can see. So there's nothing special about milk and fat. You can also do this experiment. This is uh, pigment, so little bits of, of color basically in water, and you see the same effect. So this is the experimental evidence that first led scientists to believe that molecules exist. molecules exist. We're able to see the motion of objects that we know aren't alive, so we infer that they're moving because they're colliding with things we don't see, which are the molecules. 
kuchi chi dabdi kanala khoidin de kuchi jabu dus ko kide marwa kide mares na kuchi chi dabal atin de de karsugar tanda brown se gi kuchi chi to di chungyo ba de hakoyres so in the second session today, Michelle will be talking a little bit about molecules, but right now I want to keep going smaller. So inside of molecules, and again we'll learn about this a little bit later, we learn that molecules are made of what we call atoms. So, since molecules are too small to be seen by a microscope, we certainly can't see atoms with a microscope either. Molecules, uh huh. This is an artist's representation. This isn't really what you would see with your eyes but it's a way of making a picture of what an atom might look like. In the second year curriculum, we talked about motion and how we can talk about objects moving at a constant rate or accelerating. And now, what's important to know is that atoms are always moving. An atom is never sitting still. So even though this pen seems to be at rest, if we could go beyond what the microscope can even show us, we would see that the molecules and atoms are all moving around just a little bit, and that has to do with temperature that we'll discuss in a few days. So another important thing about atoms is that they don't just appear or disappear. That in general, if I broke this pen into little pieces, I would still have all of the atoms that made up this pen. They just wouldn't be pen-shaped anymore. In general, we say that atoms cannot be broken apart. So while I could break the tree into branches and the branches into sticks and so on, once I'm to atoms, I really can't break it any further. So again, this is an artistic picture representing atoms, and it's, since we can't see it with our eyes, there are a few ways that we can make measurements scientifically, but we don't just see a nice picture out of it. Uh -huh. So, since we can't see them with a microscope, we have to do really special physics experiments where we bounce other things that aren't even the light we see with our eyes off atoms and see how it bounces off. We get a picture like this. Bouncing with electrons into uh, atoms. Electrons or x-rays. X-rays. Uh, 
tadung tad telejan tahu kerja urta ini pernah adil din adil dah tahan asing ini lab din di ko duitnya lah dapcu gua dapce ini kerja urta mukim sendiri kita jadi ni cedut samba rumu kan ni nujuh tunggu urus nanti rumu din ni nujuh tunggu urus so this is not real picture this is actually data this data, is data real picture di rumu dek urus nang anjo rumu ni baca urus so this isn't exactly what an atom looks like, but it's what science can do to, to probe it. And then we do some very complicated math to go from this to something that actually represents the atom. So so in this, uh, again, not direct picture of an atom, but what we can create from data, there are these concentric circles, and then there's something special in the center. So do you think a, an atom is, is flat, like a piece of paper? And if not, what shape do you think it might have? So this is like a slice through the atom, like a slice through an onion, but it actually would be spherical. So we're going to go back to the artistic picture since it's easier to see the details, but keep in mind that this isn't a real photograph of the atom. So the atom is like a sphere, and the very center of the sphere is the nucleus. In biology, if you've learned about the nucleus of the cell, uh, we use the same word in English, but it is not the same thing. So the nucleus stays in the center and is more or less at rest, but the outer part of the atom we call the electron shells. The electron shells are like the layers of onions in that there can be many of them and it's where we find the electrons. So it's important to remember, and maybe this is clear already, that the electron shell isn't around the electron but the electron shell is surrounding the nucleus and it's where the electron is found. So, the nucleus, as I said already, is mostly at rest in the center, but the electrons are actually moving around, as this picture tries to say. So we can talk about the speed of electrons and the kinetic energy of electrons. So 
Gujugi nubadi nanganzu teje tuguris. So the artistic picture makes this a little simpler to see what's going on, but this is still just one representation, and something called quantum mechanics makes this picture much more complicated, but we're not covering that this year. I'm going to talk more in detail now about the nucleus and the electrons, and then I will want to know what questions you have in a few slides. So now, this is a different representation of the uh, atom, but we're going to focus only on the nucleus. So in this picture, you can see that the nucleus is a sphere made up of smaller spheres, and this picture shows that those spheres are two different colors. So the two types of particles that are in the nucleus are protons and neutrons. So just to again remind you, we said that the electrons are in the outside part, the electron shells, and so now there are two types of particles that are different from electrons in the nucleus, the neutrons and the protons. Now something that science discovered a few decades ago are that protons and neutrons aren't fundamental on their own, that they actually have other particles inside of them. So within the proton and the neutron are three particles. These are each called quarks. And to our knowledge, quarks are fundamental. We don't think there's anything inside a quark. Now, we, don't, we won't talk about quarks after this point, and one reason for that is there are some special mechanisms by which I can pull out an electron from the atom, or I might be able to have a proton or a neutron by itself, away from an atom, but I can never have a quark by itself. In the nucleus, we typically only will talk about the, the neutrons and the protons. And so they have very similar masses. Their, their mass or their weight are the same, almost. The mass of the neutrons and the protons individually is much, much bigger, over a thousand times bigger than the mass of the electrons. Now, the thing that makes neutrons and protons different is not just their color, the fact that they're red and black here is just how the artist has drawn them, but what we call charge. So 
Мой нацела на год там та морвод не не мор. Та кони чабур де карис на локур дерес, локур демеден кисерес. Have you heard of charge before? Локур ги корла джай ньоес. Some? Okay. So in year four, you will study a lot about charge. So I'm only going to explain it a little bit. Тайне кранцо лорим шибала кранцо танда локур ги корла гешин ги бајне джангрес. So charge is really important in that it relates to electricity and it relates to lightning and it's going to relate to balloons. So something that maybe you've experienced before in the winter when there's not as much humidity is that if you can see her hair is actually attracted to the balloon there's a force lifting some of her hair up to the balloon i realize it's hard to see tanda gambu de dis dardi sambakare younger sna nganzo gambu da ne giyengi tanda tani gi parola tenshuk tenshuk younger ne gambu de karsna giyengi tade tengres ina ya tanda ngunsu de wuji tontu gumendus the other thing that happens here let them they're pushing away from each other, the balloons are. They're repelling. And the reason this is, we haven't learned about a force before that is pushing without contact, but because these balloons each have the same charge, they push away from each other even if they're not touching. So again, I know that that wasn't a complete description, but you will study it a lot more next summer. So the important thing to know is that there's a property that uh, an object can have called charge, and it comes in two types. Positive and negative. <laughs> Many objects are neutral, which means they are neither positive nor negative, which is why we don't normally see the effect of charge in our daily lives. So even though protons and neutrons have the same mass, protons have positive charge and neutrons are neutral. They do not have a charge. And electrons have a negative charge. So to review, electrons are the lightest, are negative, and are in the outside. Protons are positive, heavy, and in the nucleus, neutrons <coughs> have the same mass as the proton, are neutral, and also in the nucleus. What questions do people have at this point? So, uh, can you uh, elaborate more on the difference between Biolog uh, nucleus and biology, uh, cell nucleus and atomic nucleus? That's a great question. So the, uh, I don't know the origin of the English word nucleus, but I think the reason they share a word is because they're both in the center of an object and are critically important. Uh -huh.
Tane ni tanda injitse injitse nükleer sed di cik di jonkung di tolan ye şira şingi mesra. Ina yan tanda kimi çeri de mukim çeri niki karısına tanda ki niki cik di peçet tangı ve gümsün karısına nika karısına ngubuçi kim alıyor. Nika ngubuçi kim alıyor bacı tane şing ngubudi namun tane ki çeşidi çagores. The the nucleus of a cell is where the DNA is which is of course what controls in a way the cell and the nucleus of an atom again remember atoms aren't alive and so even the DNA is made up of atoms um, but the nucleus depending on what protons and neutrons are there tells you what type of atom it is uh, so we could make an analogy between the two of them, but what's important to remember is that the nucleus of your cell is made up of molecules, and those molecules are made up of atoms. So what we're talking about here is much, much, much smaller. Does that answer your question? Okay. Uh, so this is this is quark, right? Yes. So what about the other two things? Yes, good. So these are also quarks. Mm -hmm. Notice that they are shown in different colors. There are many different types of quarks. Mm -hmm. The proton is made up of three quarks, and the neutron is made up of three quarks, but they're made up of slightly different quarks which is why they end up being different particles. So then the the antaran quark race ra ne chara shamba chitan do chik de ne mawo da ngumbu jangu chara shamba tan go ye gimsen karsna ko quark kimba kanshila quark kogdul gi rik shamba jires kogdul gi rik mangbu chi yere podul de karsna kogdul gi rik sum gi tuba jire ta pardul de gidya ne kogdul gi rik sum gi tuba re inaya podul gi tanda na podul gi nangi kogdul gi rik sum dele te de tes minda jires so understanding the quarks and everything that's happening in a proton or a neutron is very complicated and scientists are still studying this. Okay. Is there any other question? Uh, does that answer your question? Do you can only learn to a length of time? To a shamba? The thing is, you might have to put it on the thing. You can put it on the children. What do you do? Oh, look at the children eating me for a jacket. You can put it on the thing. You can put it on the thing. You can put it on the thing. So, uh, what is the reason that uh, electrons um, move around the nucleus, and why is it that protons and neutrons has to stay in the center? <laughs> 
So one analogy that I might make is if you think about the, the solar system, as I know you've learned a little bit about in the first year, um, the sun is much bigger, much more massive than the planets and stays at the center. Similarly, the nucleus is really tightly bound together and is much more massive. So it just ends up by default being the center. So there are a lot of forces at play here. The protons and neutrons experience a force that pulls them all together, which is why they stay as kind of a compact ball. It's because of the attractive force. There, yeah, there's a force there, technically strong force. So the electrons have lots of forces acting on them in that two electrons will repel, they push away from one another. So that's one reason why the electrons are further out. Now one thing, and again you'll study charges more next year, the negative electrons are attracted to the positive protons, so there is an attractive force which is why the electrons don't completely fly away. And if you remember the idea of a centripetal force, that even if you have force towards the center when it's moving in a circle, that's still okay. So even though the electrons are attracted to the center, that's a centripetal force that we can think of them as orbiting the nucleus, just as the moon orbits the Earth. Centripetal force but un understanding the detailed structure of the atom is a very advanced physics and something that many researchers work on. So it's a good question, but hard to answer simply. Other questions? <laughs> So you said that all things move in constant motion. So why is it that things don't fall apart? Ah, mm, that is a very good question. So this, this has to do with energy and forces. So you can imagine that if you have a this is just an, a bad analogy, uh, a fence with a lot of goats inside, that the goats can all be moving because the fence is trapping them in. But if a predator came and the goats were scared enough and they all ran in one direction, they might break the fence down. So that's an analogy. <laughs> 
Tanganzu Rakurchi Yobachero Rakur. Rakurchi was in Alola and Eta Lugdan Ramad in the Mongo Yobache. Ta Lugdan Ramadi di Karsna Ko, Kasako Yugora, Kasako Yugor de Nair Rakurti Ku Sindigra. In a Tachilone ya Karsura, Chensen the Niji Lepchera, Chensen the Niji Lepche, Kota Saga Lebaina, Kunzu Karsna and Kasako Yukchera, Yuya Mantra Checkers and Rakur de Tore in Yangaras, Samson led in the Torsigras. So at every level, if you put too much energy into the system, it will start to fall apart. That in general, atoms are exactly how I'm describing them, but in the center of the sun, uh, there is so much motion that atoms in a way are falling apart. They don't <laughs> quite exist there. Um, Similarly, we know that a piece of paper is, stays together, but if you tear it or if you light it on fire, it breaks down. So, all of these do have some exception that if you put too much force on it or usually uh, heat it up too much, uh, it can break down. And we'll talk a little bit more about how heat relates to motion at a molecular level. たんにばでないねにばちらばたちさ、さとぎにばすぎた。さとぎにばら。さとぎにばで、は、はじゃんぎまんごちてばいね、これはんごぼなろねね、と、と、どうです。じゃ、だんだんね、さとだんだんだ
Chigne Songcheta, Yatamba, Yatan Kazabar doing it, that Lord Mundo Yabita, and it's a Zimundo in the Uris. Okay, I'm going to show you a question, and I first would like you to think about it by yourself, um, and then I'll ask you to vote with your response card after a few minutes. But first, I'd like you to not discuss with each other and think by yourself. Tatanda, you did Jima de, did Jima de Corlatanda, Nila de Shijiga Winstanda. Uh, so the question is asking that if you have an atom and you know that electrons are negative and protons are positive, the charge is the same size, and this works just like positive and negative numbers. What can we say about the number of protons and number of electrons in the atom? Okay, are you ready? Can you can you show me the color that corresponds to your shows? Okay. And if you're not sure, you can hold up the white side of the paper. That's okay. Kizza Kiranzo Tachu Minduna and a Shogu Tongba Kawaji tension and degrees. Okay, hold it up for me, please. Lengaruch, Lengaruch. Okay. So some people have a good idea, some people aren't sure. Discuss with one another. If you have no idea, try to talk about what you think might be important and hopefully you can work together to get to an answer. Ratu with the Taro Chase. Okay, can you wrap up your conversations? Oh, Taine, Jugum Yaroche, and Lengarichasson. Okay, so now show me your answers. Lengarochis. Can you have someone explain their reasoning? Mother <laughs> So basically, he says that the uh, nucleus is the most important thing uh, in an in, in atom, and it, it is what determines the atom, what type of uh, element an atom is. And uh, what determines the nucleus is the, uh, how many, uh, the number of electrons around it. Okay. Uh, basically, that's what he said. <laughs> 
OK. So how does that say that the numbers have to be equal? Or, or did he say red? Which, which choice did he make? Uh, yeah, he chose, sorry, sorry. Okay. He chose the second one. Okay. But so how does that say that the numbers have to be equal? Oh, Someone else can help him. That's okay. So he chose uh, the number of electrons and protons are same, the second, second ch ch option. Uh, the reason is that uh, what defines an element is the number of protons, right? Mm -hmm. So he was looking at the uh, uh, diagram and uh, also he looked at the atomic number of a sodium, which is 11. And he looked at the number of electrons, and it's also 11, so he thought it's... Ah, okay. Same number of electrons. So there are two approaches here. And so he took the approach of looking at some data and looking for a pattern. But there's a second approach. So the second approach is mathematical. Does anyone see what the, the mathematical approach here would be? Uh, he thinks that it's because of po positive and a negative charge. Uh, proton has a positive charge and electron has a negative charge. Exactly. So we can use the charge to say if the atom is neutral, if it has no total charge, what we would say net charge, the positive and negative need to have canceled out, and that means you need to have the same amount of positive and negative. But it's good to have multiple ways, can you show the answer, to think about the problem. Um, and in general, if we're talking about a neutral atom, it's true that the number of electrons and number of protons are the same. And I have one more slide to show before the tea break. So this is a, a, picture, a table that's actually from the first year physics primer textbook that I think you all have a copy of already. So when we think about the three particles that make up the atoms, again, we're ignoring quarks, we have our protons, our neutrons, and our electrons. The symbols that we use in English to represent these three type of particles are just the first letter of the word that we use to name it. But then we need to say why these are different particles and the things that define the particles are the charge <coughs> and then the mass. So 
For instance, the mass of the electron, we look at this and we see it says 1 times 10, and then there's a little negative 31 there, kilogram. Now, kilogram, I hope you remember, is the unit for mass. In, this, in the afternoon, we're going to practice a little bit of mathematically what this means, since I'm assuming you haven't had that much practice with what we call scientific notation. So for charge, don't worry too much about the notation here, but we see that the electron is negative, the proton is positive, but other than the minus sign, the number looks the same. The C here is for the unit coulomb, which is the unit we use to measure charge. Okay. Okay, so T? T. So, Parsing?